Bienvenidos a tu viñeda Yates, señor. Looking like a pro, man. Okay, let's go, sir. Thank you. It's the damnedest thing I've ever heard. And welcome to the Yates Winery. Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be bigger. Come on, Flowers. Guests are waiting. Get yourself patted down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs getting on. I'm gonna need to frisk you if you want to come through here. Hey, yo, there's no need to flex. You ain't got to impress me.
So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss, disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. They're already at it. Go on, place the wine on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin. One of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary. The proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot. The wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood! And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom. Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Oh, He's got absolutely. absolutely. Perhaps absolutely. Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. God. What? You're lying, of course, which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. I agree. I'm yes. In. Yes. Listen to yourselves. Don Yeat is not even appointed constant yet. And already he conspires to betray his master. I don't pretend to understand Edward's every move, but I do know that this man is an opportunist and unworthy of office. Then you are a traitor to the Heralds. The room is against you, Tamara. Stand down now or share her fate. Edwards 
will hear about this. I think not. I am sorry, but you brought this on yourself. Mr. Cortazar. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping a crime scene. Like we discussed, remote, staged accident. Oh, and Corvo, make it for two. Just improvise. Come on, I am not in the moments today. Miss Burnwood. You rolled out the red carpet just for me. Don, you shouldn't have. So confident, even in defeat. I suppose you're not used to danger, always safe behind your screens. Just tell me one thing before we go ways. Why me? Why you? Please. It will keep me away. 
awake at nights and I'm 65. I get up four times to piss as it is. Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale. And it's eating him up. He needs to win. Full, unequivocal victory. My recruitment is just the feather in his cap. By the way, you write about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. <sighs> Turns out this woman will be a devil. If it's any consolation, you're in the You do, you now. asshole! Do just stand there! Shoot her! And I will make it my mission to take. Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. Won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh. We strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. <laughs> <laughs> 